HCAM programming is supported by viewers like you and by Star Realty, a real estate brokerage firm specializing in residential real estate sales in and around Hopkinton. Their agents live in town, send their children to Hopkinton schools, serve on local boards, volunteer for local causes, and frequent local business. Hopkinton is where they live, work, and give back. Star Realty. The Elementary School Building Committee Sidewalk, an interview with Hopkinton's new Superintendent of Schools, and a look at what's playing on HCAM this week. All this and more brought to you by Hopkinton's television station, HCAM TV. I'm Michelle Murdoch, and HCAM News starts right now. and welcome to HCAM News for the week of August 12th. First up tonight, an update on the proposed casino in Milford. On Monday, August 5th, the Milford Board of Selectmen voted 2-1 to one to begin negotiations for a host community agreement with Foxwoods. If negotiations are successful, a town referendum will be held in November. Representative Carolyn Dykema will once again host the annual senior picnic at the Laborers Training Center on Wednesday, August 21st. This popular event will feature free hamburgers and hot dogs as well as prizes and a chance to socialize with seniors from across the 8th Middlesex District. Transportation for Hopkinton seniors is available via the Senior Center, but sign-up is required by Monday, August 19th. The first ever Boston Marathon motorcycle ride with more than 1,000 riders left from Hopkinton on Sunday, August 11th for a 65.1 mile ride that began in Hopkinton, followed the marathon route, and ended in Lowell. The event was a fundraiser for the Jimmy Fund, and due to the great turnout, the organizers are hoping to make it an annual event. A recent site walk hosted by the Elementary School Building Committee toured the Center School and Elmwood School properties in a preliminary review of potential sites for a solution to the Center School issue. On Thursday, August 1st, the Elementary School Building Committee hosted a site walk of both the Elmwood and Center School properties to gain a first-hand perspective on the space available for expansion or new construction. The tour began at Elmwood after a brief introduction by Chairman Joe Markey, who made it clear that the committee was in the preliminary stages of site selection while waiting to hear back from the Massachusetts School Building Authority known as the MSBA. In the meantime, we've committed to the community to keep the momentum going. And uh, what this walk is about today is ongoing knowledge development for ourselves on the committee and for the community on what sites may be of interest uh, for us to follow up with more formally were we to enter into a formal feasibility study uh, sometime this fall. Equipped with maps of the property, the group which consisted mainly of committee members, including Town Manager Norman Kamalo and Superintendent Mary McLeod, headed off down a wooded path at Elmwood that ran parallel to the athletic fields in front of the school. There's a little choke road that goes down here on, on, the, on this little, pretty little plan where they showed the other school, the proposed school. They pretty much follow that choke road coming in. The road goes through here? No. Right back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take a walk we over went, there. We went by it. The orange. There's a little oh, orange yeah, thing yeah. on the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Go out that way. That goes right out to you. The area around Elmwood School consists of approximately 19 acres, but the land to the north and the northwest has considerable wetlands issues. The area toured during the site walk included the area near the athletic fields and the pine grove, which is to the east and has 500 feet of frontage on Wood Street. The area of this section of land is approximately 3.25 acres. While we looked at the Pine Grove, there's also the athletic fields which belong to the school, 
Uh, potentially, you could put a building on the fields and create new athletic fields in where the grove is. So the biggest single advantage, I think, is that um, you kind of keep the facilities together. There's some potential to, to share facilities, as has been talked about before, and um, we don't have to pay any money to buy the land. We already own it. From Elmwood, the group moved on to Center School. Center School sits on 11.7 acres. The property is divided roughly in half by a strip of land owned by NSTAR, and while there is about the same amount of area on each side of this strip, the land below the strip has a considerable downslope. The group started at the back of the school. If you look straight behind me, it doesn't go too much further than what you see there, but over on this side, it goes back pretty far. Uh, where are we? Let's see. This is park, center. So we're, we're standing in the back of center school here. It just goes back to about what you see back there. But if you just go over to the right a little, it goes all the way back past the utility easement, all the way back almost pre to Presswick. And from there, moved on to the area near the easement. So I'd suggest that we move over to the, to the right, where that big tire is in the sand up there, because there's a path that goes into the woods and across the um, utility easement. We just crossed the easement, and it, it goes a great ways back all the way to Presswood, this lot that we're on. Yeah, almost, almost the same distance as yeah, And there's the easement right there, too, so yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, as far as we just walked from Ash Street, to here oh. is also on that side. But it even goes down even more after yeah, that. Yeah, it drops yeah. off again. But, but you've got a lot of granite you've got to worry about getting rid of at that yeah. site if that's where the school's built. You just haul it across the easement and yeah. cut start filling it. There's a lot of land that the town owns behind the center school. Um, it slopes um, downward fairly rapidly once you get past where the, the power line goes through. The power line is on um, runs along an easement that runs along parallel to Ash Street um, that we, you know, we'd, we'd have to deal with. Um, there'd be a considerable amount of site work behind Santa School. Um, part of the problem with that particular site is, as everybody knows, the access to the school is kind of limited on the left and on the right. So whatever we did back there, whether it was remodeling the school or building a new school, access to the site is going to be important because we're going to have to keep the kids in the school while we're doing whatever we're doing. Um, so that's a consideration. Related to the issue of access, the group next toured a neighboring property owned by the Hine family. There's another piece of property that uh, uh, doesn't directly abut the school, um, but it is connected in the back. Um, that may be available and, and we also walk that site as well. The Hain family has given us permission today to walk from the back end of this town property to the back side of their property and into their backyard. Um, if you'll recall one of the constraints identified in the last feasibility study at this location was the narrow site access. So the reason that the Hain property is potentially interesting is its potential for solving uh, site access. As the site walk ended, Marky says its goal was achieved. Today's site walk went well. Until now, we've seen these properties on uh, PowerPoint slides and online on maps. Uh, but it's a different experience when you actually walk the property and see it firsthand. So uh, that was the objective today, was to give the committee and our guests and the public that attended today the opportunity to see up close in person this, this land. And it's all part of our efforts over the summer to kind of keep that momentum going while we wait to hear back from MSBA and to develop our collective knowledge as a community about what some of the potential solutions might be to the constraints at Center School. The walk, I, I felt, you know, was informative because, you know, we could see firsthand, other than just from looking at a photograph, uh, what this might look like. And um, I know that there's conversation among the 
elementary school building committee to make sure that we examine any possibility. The people on the, the committee that either don't have kids in school, the people that actually work for the town, the administrators, the, the, uh, the you know principals, the superintendent, they, they don't get an opportunity to, to, to see the land that's in the back. They see the, the facility that they're teaching in, so it was important there. It was also important so that when we could discuss these issues going forward, we're all, at, at least on the building committee, we're all on the same page. We are expecting to hear back from MSBA, positive or negative, by uh, probably September time frame, sometime in the fall. Until then, we'll continue developing our knowledge about uh, potential properties of interest. Uh, we had a motion today to look at additional properties as well, and we'll continue to do that. We're using this time in the summer to, to our best advantage to, to hopefully, you know, scale down the potential numbers of sites so that, you know, we can come to some real decisions in the short term. I'm hoping that we go beyond um, the physical needs for the building and start looking at the advantages from an educational point of view to having an early childhood center in this town. As mentioned in the video, the Elementary School Building Committee's next meeting is a joint working session with the school committee on Monday, August 19th at 7 p.m. in the fire station meeting room. The two committees will review updated projected enrollment figures from NESDEC, the New England School Development Council. The meeting is open to the public but will not be televised as it is a working session. In our next story tonight, HCAM News visits with Hopkinton's new superintendent of schools, Dr. Kathy McLeod. While her official start date was July 1st, Dr. Kathy McLeod, Hopkinton's new superintendent of schools, has been gathering information and preparing for her new role in Hopkinton since February when she was selected to lead the Hopkinton School District. Sitting in her office at the administration building on Hayden Row, with just about four weeks to go till opening day, McLeod said it feels good to be in Hopkinton. I was at um, my first department head meeting this morning at Town Hall and it said to them then, you know, it, it, it feels like I've been here much longer than I have because the interview process started back in November of last year. So I obviously um, was doing my research and learning a lot about the town even before I even began, began the interview process. Um, and then once I was appointed in February, um, there was still, between February and, and my actual start date of July 1, um, which was really a transition time for me, mm -hmm. a time when I could take the opportunity, you know I came to many meetings and just sat in as, a, as an observer, um, really trying to get to know more about the community. I've met with many, many people during that, during that transition time. So when I started here on the 1st of July, I knew a lot of people already. I knew everybody in central office, I knew the entire administrative team. Um, so it just feels great to actually be here now and, and not transitioning and, and for it to be official. With a lot going on and many projects to work on, McLeod says her focus right now is preparing for the start of the new school year. The summer affords a time to take stock um, and, and learn about things deeply so that when I when, every, when the kids are actually here, the students and the teachers, um, I'll be ready to move forward with setting some, some goals. Um, so when I say that, um, you know, I've been able to visit the schools, you know, go have, have tours with Al Rogers so that I can see what, what are the projects taking place, what are the capital projects taking place, what's the plan for preparing for the kids for the first day. As a new superintendent at this time of the year, the biggest thing is planning for the start of school again and and it's amazing and so for people who are listening how much goes into preparing for the first day of school um, so that's been the biggest project really is 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 that entry another project for the upcoming school year is a review and update to the strategic plan but McLeod says while she is looking forward to that opportunity, she is also mindful of respecting the work done by others. I think it's really important when you're new to the community that you, that you come in listening and learning and honoring the traditions that make the community unique. Uh, so I would, I would not want to come in saying, oh, I'm going to change this, I'm going to change that, until I've had the opportunity to work with 
the community to determine these are things that absolutely we want to keep doing and these are some things that are presenting some challenges and how can we work together to improve. I would I'd rather use that word than, than change um, or do differently. That will be part of you know the, the entry plan, the strategic plan, getting to know and understand what the challenges are and then together determining how we can perhaps do things differently. One thing that will be different, however, is opening day. Traditionally, the first day of school is an event where teachers, faculty, and school administrators would all meet for an opening address from the superintendent. But McLeod says she has a new plan. What I've chosen to do is have uh, hold a teacher's meeting. The HTA will have a meeting from 8 to 9, but then I'm going to go to each individual building to meet with um, the teachers in their buildings. And the reason for that is um, to demonstrate how much I value um, what's happening in the classroom, one, one reason. A second reason is that the concerns in each building are very different. What they're working on, what, what the challenges are, very different, vastly, from what's going on in center school to, to what the high school teachers are dealing with. So to present a message of not only introduction, but of understanding, I really felt that was best done at the building level. Um, so I and the school committee chair, Nancy Burdick, and I will, will go from school to school throughout the day. We're, we're working with the administrative team, with the principals, to get on a schedule that works for them. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. I, f I just feel that it's much more personal um, and will let teachers get to know me better um, than me standing up in front of, you know, 400 people. School-specific meetings are also how McLeod hopes to get to know parents better and she has decided to hold these meetings in the fall when everyone is back from vacation. Because it's summer um, and everybody's away, um, I, I had chosen to wait until the fall. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to each, um, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll get invited to an HPTA meeting. Um, but also, I think it's really effective to go to the school council meetings at each school. And if I get on their schedule and the principals are able to put a notice out that I'm attending a particular night. Um, it will give, again, parents at the different grade levels the opportunity to, to meet me and to let me know what their concerns are. Particularly important to McLeod is reaching out to parents of preschool and younger students. I'm planning on developing um, an early childhood parent focus group um, to have a voice from the preschool and kindergarten parents. Um, because preschool is, we, we have a limited access for the community preschool, we don't have enough space, um, I'm not sure that they have a voice and I really want to be able to hear from the parents whose children are just beginning to enter our system um, to make sure that they, that they feel connected to the school system as well. McLeod also spoke about some upcoming events one to help spruce up the school grounds, and another that will provide a foundation for beginning discussions about the strategic plan. In having conversations with various people in the community as part of my entry, I heard over several times that um, there are areas that are not maintained or could be maintained uh, better. And so I asked the questions and I spoke with obviously our director of buildings and grounds and, and our athletic director and toured the grounds myself um, and really could see that based on the fact that there, there's just so much to do in the summer and not enough hands to do it all, the maintenance and custodial um, group are working on making sure that the buildings are sparkling to come back in, in the fall and there's all sorts of work to be done to maintain our extensive fields. Um, it seemed that this would be an opportunity for, for students and parents um, and, and the administrative team and school committee to all come together to um, just roll up our sleeves and, and help to spruce things up, which is what we're calling it Spruce Up Day, we're really focusing on basically on weeding areas that um, are surrounding our fields and uh, areas that are used by, by the public as well, tennis courts, basketball courts. Um, the bleachers behind the football field, the, the dugout. Um, so that's what we're doing on the 24th. We also have uh, a retreat for the administrative team plan for the third week of August, so August 20th through the 22nd, where 
it really gives us an opportunity to really have deep conversations about the beginnings of the strategic plan and the goals for a dis the district as a system as opposed to the individual uh, goals for each building. So it'll be all of the principals, the new assistant principals, we have three. Um, we have a new director of technology, as, as people know. So um, a time to, to build team together and also um, spend some time planning goals um, for the upcoming year. Throughout the interview, McLeod's enthusiasm and excitement about the upcoming school year came through loud and clear. And when asked if she had a message for students, parents, and faculty, this is what she had to say. Welcome back to school is what I'd like to say. It's, uh, I'm excited to get going. I'm excited to meet their, their students. Um, I think it's going to be a wonderful year. And um, yeah, I think that that's really the message is that it's, uh, it's an exciting time of year. From the superintendent's office, I'm Michelle Murdoch for HCAM News. McLeod will be officially introduced to the Board of Selectmen at their meeting this Tuesday night, August 13th, along with several other new town employees, including the new Parks and Recreation Director, Jennifer Floyd, the new Assistant Town Clerk, Brenda McCann, and Hopkinton's newest firefighter, Sarah Jordan. In addition to the Board of Selectmen, the Planning Board is meeting this week on Monday, August 12th with Representative Carolyn Dykema scheduled to speak about water policy. Other meetings this week include a Trails Committee meeting on Tuesday, August 13th and a Principal's Coffee with Center School Principal Lauren Dubow in the Center School Cafeteria on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. And now, for a look at what's playing on HCAM this week, it's Courtney Taylor with the latest HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider News segment. On Monday, August 12th, at 7 p.m., poet Martha Collins reads from her book, White Papers, which explores the questions of race during this episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Of course, there were the confusing other Indians, one of whom my mother knew. A pastor's wife who wore a sari so people wouldn't think she was, you know, what she wasn't. At 6.30 p.m. on August 13th, the Board of Selectmen meeting will broadcast live on HCAM TV. The meeting can be viewed on Comcast Channel 8, Verizon Channel 30, or on our live stream at www.hcam.tv slash live dash stream. At 11.30 a.m., Dr. Kenneth Blanchard discusses the symptoms of hypothyroidism, how it affects the body, and how it can be treated during this edition of the Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series. On Thursday, August 15th at 7.30 p.m., Big Band Rogers performs at the Town Common in the last of the Concerts on the Common series. During a new Meet Your Neighbor on Friday, August 16th at 9 p.m., lifelong Hopkinton resident Helen Cady recalls her childhood, visits with family, high school, and her marriage. Do you remember Paul Kenny? He used to run the gas station up there oh, in uh -huh. Hayden. He was a hot tomato, yeah. and he was building on the new school, laying the bricks. Mm -hmm. And we were in the first grade, about a foot to two feet away. It was very narrow. Uh -huh. And he'd take his trowel and he'd bang on the wall of the old building. Well, one day, try to get us kids laughing. Uh -huh. And one day, when he did it, all the plaster come down oh over boy. the first grade teacher. Oh of course, goodness. he turned right around and ah. started <laughs> laying the bricks again. On Sunday, August 18th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from August 12th will air. Remember that you can have the HKIM Insider sent to your inbox every week by signing up for it. If you already receive it, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to more HCAM news. And that wraps up this week's edition of HCAM News, keeping Hopkinton up to date with the latest local happenings. I'm Michelle Murdoch, and for the HCAM News team, that's your news, Hopkinton.
When